Hey everybody, Dr. Green here. Today I am going to show you how to set up Visual Studio Code to uh, build easily and manipulate files easily with C++ on your computer. The first thing we need is VS Code. So go ahead to code.visualstudio.com. Uh, you can go in here, go ahead and download this. You want to get the stable version for either Mac, Windows, or Linux, whatever is appropriate for you. Once that's installed, you will have something like this. Uh, it comes with great documentation. You can dive into it. Uh, this is wonderful. So we'll get right back to this. After that, uh, the next thing we want to do is check our Windows version if we are on Windows. If you are on Windows and you do not have Windows Professional or Windows Education Edition, you should go to azureforeducation.microsoft.com slash devtools. Uh, you will come here and you will have a thing, my account, portal, all those kind of stuff. Um, you can just go ahead and sign in if you are a BGSU student. Uh, you'll see this will come through. Mine should just pop through because it's single sign-on. Uh, but it didn't. It brought me to the QA. So we're going to go ahead and click sign in again. We're going to sign in at my username. Uh, and we are here. So I'm going to go to the portal. It's probably going to make me sign in again. Wouldn't surprise me. Uh, I'm going to click on education. And here we are. So on education, I can click on software. Then I can go in here. I'm going to type Windows 10. Uh, and you'll see I have Windows 10 Education, right? Fantastic. Uh, all you have to do is click View Key. It'll give you a key. You go ahead and copy that key to your clipboard. You go to Start, Settings, Update, and Security Activation. Put that in and hit OK. Uh, and it will automatically upgrade your Windows right, to the proper version. So we need Windows Professional or Education for Docker to run correctly. Once that's done, uh, you want to go to docker.com, go to products and Docker desktop, download that for your appropriate uh, platform, go ahead and install that and you should be in good shape. Uh, if at any point in that process it asks you if you want to use Windows containers or Linux containers, please select Linux containers. Once we have that done, uh, we would go back here. We'll click this little item right here, which brings us to all the extensions. You'll see I have many extensions uh, installed here. You'll probably want to install C slash C++. That's a great thing to have working with C++. Uh, you're also going to want to install remote containers. Okay? You'll see I already have this installed. You would just click the install button. And what this lets us do is work seamlessly with Docker to develop our code. Um, so I'm going to go in here. I'm going to bring up my menu, that's Command Shift P or Control Shift P. I'm going to type in Remote Containers, so I get all my Remote Containers options. And I'm going to say, hey, let's open a folder in a container. So what am I going to do? Uh, I'll make a new folder here for us all, new folder, my test project. And I'll say open this folder. Uh, it'll come up, it'll ask me what I want to do here. I can just type in C++, it'll say develop C++ applications in Linux, click enter. Uh, Debian 10 is just fine. So you'll see it's actually opening this here. Uh, it's going to ask me for permissions on my Mac, which I'm going to give it to do these things. And you'll see down in the corner here, we have this information that says starting dev container. Uh, so this is what it's actually doing. Uh, it is using Docker to download and run a an image of a container so that I can begin developing in C++. Okay? So you'll see it's activating extensions, downloading some C++ language things. Uh, it's doing a whole bunch of things. So we'll give it a second here. Uh, and we are now in good shape. You'll see all that stuff is cleared. I'm in my dev container C++. Uh, this has actually created a little directory in my uh, folder called .dev container, which contains some information about my environment and what it's doing and what I've asked it to do uh, and, and what's going on. So now all I have to do in here, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file, main.cpp. Uh, we're going to just do a very, very basic C++ program. There we go. Uh, I'm going to come in here. I'll say standard C out. This is a test program. Hello, BGSU. Okay, there we go. We have now saved this file. Um, everything looks good. All right, so there's a couple things I can now do. I can go to a new terminal. Um, this is a Linux terminal, so I can type ls. I can use g and compile my code. I can also go up here and go to run and start debugging if I want to debug my code.
uh, you'll see if it will ask me which compiler I want to use. I'm going to say GDB. We are using G++ with this container, so I'm going to use G++, uh, and you'll see it'll jump here. Oh, to customize run and debug, create a launch.json. You'll see it actually does this for me automatically. Uh, I also can go in here and modify this. This is a little beyond this, but now that it's in your project, uh, you'll continue to use it. Uh, and you'll see this actually ran and debugged. The only problem was I did not set a breakpoint. So now let me start debugging. See, it takes a second, uh, and here we are. We now have this standard C out. It stopped on that line. If I had variables, I would see that information here. Uh, I can create watches for expressions and various other variables there. Uh, and I can also see the call stack down here. Uh, my normal debugging tools to step over, step into, step out of, play through, or stop are available here. So that is, in a nutshell, how you use VS Code with remote containers to compile, run, and debug C++.